And this is what they want the world to believe, that you have a freedom of choice. But I want you to show you, I want to show you something. Do you think churches support this? Do you think churches support abortion rights? Probably say, well, there's no way. There's no way any church in America would support this. Numerous Christian denominations and religious groups agree that the Bible does not condemn abortion and that abortion should continue to be legal. Let me show you a few of them. American Baptist churches, United States of America, agree to that. These are all the churches and denominations that support legalized abortion. Support it. We look at American Eth Ethical Union, American Jewish Congress. Let's see, also we see the Presbyterian Church of America, Reorganized Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints. Look, United Methodist Church, the YWCA. The Evangelicals for Choice. Now, I also ask you, is America governed by religious faith? Is America governed by religious faith? Not anymore. Because why? This right here says, the Bible does not condemn abortion. But even if it did, we live under a secular constitution, not a theocracy. The separation of church and state, the right to privacy and women's rights all demand freedom of choice. That is from the religious, freedom from religious foundation. That is their motto. That is, that is what they want us to believe, is that it, the separation of church and state and the right of women's rights all demand a freedom of choice. Now, God gave us a freedom of choice. In the very beginning, he gave us a choice. He gave us a choice to choose. We either choose him or we don't choose him. He gave us that choice. They're saying that we should have a freedom of choice, okay? But at the same time, they're also telling us that, that you know, the, the abortion is legal. It's okay. It's okay to have an abortion. It's okay to do that. You know, because of this way of thinking, because of the way they put this out there, we see in Louisiana, from 1975 to 2018, we see this right here. At the very top of this graph is 20,000. You see, in 1982, we were close to 20,000. In 2018, we're almost 9,000. You see, this is just Louisiana right here. This is right here in our own state, in Louisiana, abortions, that we say it's okay. It's okay. The, the commandment, they said the sixth commandment that says thou shalt not kill, it doesn't apply to this. That's the world's way of thinking. It does not apply to abortion. I beg to differ. I really do because I take you back to the scripture where it talks about you knew me before I was even in my mother's womb. You know, what is it when a lady is pregnant, what is she called? A woman with child. Not a lady with a fetus. She's a woman with child. What is a child? A child is a human being with a heartbeat. With a, with a, it may not have a fully developed brain to make a conscious decision. But you see behind me, there are a few, few sayings on these boards that if that baby was conscious and it did have a brain to, and it did have the ability to talk to its mother in the womb, what would it say? When Elizabeth and Mary met, when they were pregnant, what happened? They'd be jumped in the womb. Does that not say that, that child, there is a child in that womb? <laughs> I mean, the 
that that child is actually a child of conscious thought and will. Look right here. 18. 18 are under, aborted under the age of 15. Under the age of 15. From 15 to 29, 729 had abortions. And the list just keeps on going. Where is our world gone today that at the age of 15, children are having abortions? I mean, that's just, you know, that's just wrong. But we call it okay. It's okay. Nothing wrong with it. Do what you want. Have all the unprotected sex you want. If you get pregnant, that's fine. We'll just go down here and do this, and you'll be done. No, no, no harm, no foul. Okay. One day, one day you will stand account for that, for that life you take. One day you will. Look right here. In 2017, there was 8,706 abortions in Louisiana. And there were 60,892 live births. That's one abortion for every eight births. One abortion for every eight births. You see? Now we're looking down by clinics. I'm telling you, you look at Shreveport. Shreveport's up there. In 2018, 3,432. 3,432 in Streetport Clinic. But why? Why is this happening? We talked about it this morning in Sunday school. Let me see if I can find it. But yeah, this, this morning when we talked, when we was in Sunday school, we were looking at what happened. When God turns man over to their own devices. In Romans chapter 1, I believe it was, it says, And God, and since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to a debased mind to do what ought not to be done. You see, God turned them over to their own sins. And in Romans chapter 1, we see that, you know, from 26 on down, because it says, For this reason, God gave them dishonorable passions, for the women exchanged natural relations, for that they were contrary to nature. And the men likewise gave up the natural relations with women and were consumed with passions for one for another. Why? They turned their back on God, so God gave them up to their sin. What do you think is happening in America today? What do you think is happening in America today? That same thing. Why do you think killing the babies is, is okay? Because man thinks that there's nothing wrong with it. Man thinks that it's okay. Let me tell you something. It's outright murder. Mm -hmm. It's murder. I don't care how you look at it. People can busted that door and stoned me to death, but I will go to my grave dying saying that uh, abortion is murder. No matter which way you look at it. I don't care. You can sit here and tell me that the most extreme cases where a serial rapist raped a woman she got pregnant, that she should be, she should abort it. That baby deserves a lot of chance. I don't care what you say. That baby deserves a chance. You don't have to keep it. There's plenty of people around the world that would love to adopt a child. They can't have kids. There are a few quick facts that in 2018, 8,097 babies were aborted in the state of Louisiana. 18 girls, that's actually, in, in 2000, that was actually 22 abortions per day in 2018 in the state of Louisiana. 18 girls were under the age of 15. 86% of women who had abortions in 2018 were unmarried. Where are the parents today? Where are they at? 
Where are they allowing this? You see, this wouldn't be possible if we had parents that gave a crap about their kids. If they gave, if they were any kind of parent and worried about their kids, instead of just being a friend to their kids, these numbers wouldn't be as bad as they are today. But you see, the parents fail their kids by trying to be their friend, by trying to be nice to them, and trying not to, and trying to give their kids their own opinion in life. Instead of being a parent. You have the right to do what you think is best. They're a child. They're going to do what you tell them to do. Or they're going to do what the world tells them to do. Which one do you want them to live? Look right here. 67% of babies were aborted within 8 weeks of pregnancy. Now. I could go into more statistics and dig deeper that breaks it all the way down to how many of them were aborted in the ninth month of pregnancy. They went from a few days, a few weeks, to nine months. Nine months, doctors were still aborting babies. You understand this little scene right here on this table? That's about the size of a baby that a doctor would be aborting at nine months. At nine months. The national statistics. Look right here. In 1975, now you want to know what, what kills me is in 1973 when Roe vs. Wade happened, in that year alone, there was almost three quarters of a million babies aborted in that year alone. Two years later, 1975, they broke a million and 34 babies, 170,000. Live births were 3 million. That was one for every three. For every three babies born, one was aborted. In 2014, they, the national was 926,200. We're down, we're declining, but we're still one for every four babies born, we're one, one's aborted. Why? Because America has fallen. America is no longer the greatest nation on this earth. When it's in the eyes of God. Amen. Why is that? Because America doesn't believe there is a God. America has put God to the pack and put man in front. You see, the numbers just go, just keep on going. Since 1973, when Roe vs. Wade came out, 63 million abortions have happened. 63 million babies that never had a chance in life. They could have been the next greatest president, next greatest preacher. 63 million kids didn't have a chance. This right here is what happens when you give people freedom from religion. This guy right here, he went up against the courts in Kentucky to get his license plate that says, I'm God. <laughs> and let me show you this right here. A federal judge ordered the state of Kentucky to pay more than 150000 to the groups representing this guy. The Freedom from Religion Foundation and the ACLU were the two groups that were supporting him. The judge decided in his favor and granted him the ability to make a license plate that says, I'm God. And then turned around and ordered the state to pay these companies 150000 to support this guy. Tell you what it says in Matthew. In Matthew chapter 24, verses 4 through 5. And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come and say, and I am Christ, and shall deceive many. What do you think the America is doing today? 
You think there's a lot of false prophets out there in the world today? All these so-called free thinkers, all these so-called ACLU, you know, the freedom from religion, and the list keeps on going. They may not be the Antichrist, but they're paving the way for him. They're turning people, they are turning Christians and churches into saying abortion is okay, homosexuality is okay, the Bible doesn't condemn it, so why should we? The Bible does condemn it, and it says it right there, and if you condone it, then you should step out of the pulpit and hang it up. Because you Amen. are no longer standing for God. You need to close the door of that church right now. Look in our own look in our own political realm. Who's running? I'm not bringing politics to the pulpit, but look at the nationality. People are running for race. Running running the race. Do we not have the first homosexuality running for a president? Why? Because we say it's okay. We could don it. But what does the Bible say about it? Mm -hmm. This country, when the pilgrims hit the Plymouth Rock, was what? It was dedicated to God. Two nations were ever dedicated to God. Israel and America. Israel fell. And you see what happened to them. Guess what? America is on the same path that Israel was. Amen. And America will fall. Why? Because of our own stupidity and our own blindness that we cannot see that God is in control and America does not want to submit to an almighty God. They want to submit to their own sins and call it okay. Amen. Let's see. America would not want to submit to the Bible. They don't want to submit to God. They say they don't believe in submission. I don't like the word slave. I don't like this submission. But we'll turn around and submit to everything else in the Bible in the world. We'll submit to this and we'll submit to that. And we'll let every person in the world tell us how to think. But we won't listen to what the Bible has to say. But you'll go down to that poll and you'll vote for this guy or this woman because they said that they're going to do a good job. Smoke and mirrors, I tell y'all. Amen. It's smoke and mirrors. They'll tell you it's all pretty and everything like that. But I ask you to look behind the veil. Look behind the veil. What do you see? What do you see with America today? Is it actually the America it used to be? I was watching a, a history channel yesterday and it was going through World War II and how when the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor, I mean, it was not shortly right after the entire United States was unified. Unified. 300 billion dollars brought together in war bonds quickly to build up the military to go to war. An entire nation unified. Probably the last time this nation was ever unified. And what happened after that? Each war something different started. And then all the protesters came all the I don't even want to get on that soapbox those kind of people that, that didn't believe in the war came and then we gave voice to the atheists and then we gave voice to this and now look at us we are the reason America is in the situation it's in today we allowed it to happen Christians didn't stand up they hid in the closet if I go back to this picture, I want you to see this guy's hat says out of the closet atheist. He's an out of the closet atheist. He believes in atheism. But you see, I want to bring it back to abortion. Life begins at, at, at conception. 
Whereas the world would tell you that life doesn't begin at conception. I've read all the stuff that the Freedom from Religion Foundation talked about where it says all that if there's just a seed, that there's no bee, there's no nothing, that there's no life. And then they'll go on to tell you, and they have a lot of good arguments that God is a bigger killer of babies than man ever was. And they'll go on to tell you all this stuff to make you think, well, you know, maybe they're right. Maybe. But let me tell you something. God is a just God. Amen. He's a righteous God. He cannot condone sin, so therefore he has to punish that sin. Sodom and Gomorrah, what happened? I mean, you look at America today, how much further off are we from Sodom and Gomorrah? Ruth Graham once said that if God does not judge America, he's going to have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. And God doesn't apologize. I'm just, I, I hate to tell you all that, but God doesn't apologize. So guess what, America? Your day's coming. You see, life does begin at concession because in Jeremiah, he says right here, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as a spokesman to the world. I knew you before I formed you in the womb. He says that to Jeremiah. I knew you before I formed you. So there was a person before there was a person in the womb. I knew you before I formed you in the womb. He knew us before we were ever formed. But yet you're going to tell me that life doesn't start at conception. You're going to tell me that all life came from single cell organisms. Or this and that. No. I don't care what your theory is. For us to be here today, there had to be a grand design upon us that just Amen. did not happen by chance. For the body to be in ability it is today is not by chance. And we're going to kill another human body and call it Planned Parenthood. God's plan and purpose for you was for I know the plans I have for you says the Lord they are plans for good and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. To give you a future and a hope. 63 million babies never had a future and a hope from 1973. And that was from to 2018. So if we count in 2019, we're probably close to 64 million babies. A little over. But they never had a future or a hope. Moreover, one out of every six women who had an abortion describes herself as an evangelical Christian. Now, let's bring it right back to home. One out of every six women said that they were Christians and went through an abortion. How can you be a Christian and have an abortion? I mean... There has to be some morality in here. The morality of America no longer exists. Our moral compass is broke. It is. Whereas like this, this scene back here, we call this okay. There's nothing wrong with this. It's okay. You don't see this. All you see is numbers on TV screens. But you go to these clinics and they tell you all this good stuff how it's going to be okay. There's no, going to be no pain, this and that. I challenge you to watch an actual abortion. See what happens to a baby when it's aborted. What it goes through. It is nothing pretty. You would not put an animal through that. That's right. But you would put a baby through that. 
if we would not even do that to our word to our worst animal on our farm but we turn around and do that to a baby you watch it what they have to do to break down the bones to break down to crush everything to dismantle a baby especially a nine month old baby a nine month old baby that's ready to come out to the world And they say, I don't want it. Kill it. It has a heartbeat. What age? I think it's 21 days. 21 days. Roughly 21 days. There's a heartbeat. How many weeks is that? Three weeks? Close to? But in three to four weeks, it has a heartbeat. And we're going to say it's okay to kill it. Here are some types of abortions. Abortions have become one of the most common surgical procedures in the world today. It has become tragically common amongst teens. Especially amongst Christian teens. Some of the reasons induced abortion. Drugs. You know, there's several different ways that they, they went through having abortions. But the phrase a woman with child affirms that a fetus is a child. A fetus is a child. You see, a fetus is called a child before birth. Jesus was called Jesus while in the womb. He was called Jesus while in the womb. He was called Jesus before he was in the womb. See, a child is a child. A fetus is a child. They asked Billy Graham, Dr. Reverend Billy Graham one time, why is abortion such a big issue for Christians? He gave a long response, y'all, and he talks about the spiritual condition, you know, is changed by the power of Christ. But the problem today is that sin that we live in today, it produces a problem that causes all these unwanted pregnancies. You know, that sin, that, that pleasure that we live in, that we were drawn to, that we want to just relish in is what causes all these unwanted pregnancies. And that leads to these abortions. You see, we're born into sin. We're born evil. You actually have to teach a child how to be good growing up. You have to teach them right and wrong. Where are the parents at today that's allowing this to happen? You know, I tell you exactly where they are. They're driving their kids to the abortion clinic because you seen 18 of them in the state of Louisiana were under the age of 15. What's the age to get your driver's license nowadays? Still 17 last time I checked, right? 16, 17. Well, it's not 15. So you think about it. Parents are driving their kids there and having the abortion. Who do you think is paying for it? <laughs> you know, come on now. Kids are getting kicked out of school for vaping. Who's buying it for them? A lot of them say, well, it's mom and dad. You know, I was driving the bus not too long ago on a different route. I got cussed out by a seven-year-old. I mean, I was like, you got to be kidding me. And I said, son, if we weren't on this bus, I'd pick you up and chunk you across the yard. I was like, dude. But you see, that's the world we're living in. Where it's okay for a seven-year-old to go to school and cuss his teacher out because they ain't going to do nothing to it. Why? Mom and daddy is through the school. Hmm. Yeah? There is a reason that God said don't spare the rod. And you know what? 
Here's that reason. 63 million babies because parents wanted to spare the rod and let their children think for themselves. This is what happened. Reverend Billy Graham goes on to say that we see the Apostle Paul writes the acts of sinful nature are obvious. Sexual morality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissension, factions of envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. And that's all in the Bible in Galatians. That tells you everything you need to know what's going on in the world today right there. And you got to think, how many thousands of years ago was this book wrote? You know, when David wrote the Psalms and he was writing all this stuff, you think about it. That still applies to the day, y'all. Amen. When Moses wrote the Ten Commandments, that people say we don't belong to the Mosaic Law, uh, you're wrong in that act because we still do belong to it. Just Christ didn't abolish it. He made it stricter. Amen. He tightened it up even more because he added that spiritual aspect to it. Whereas you don't have to just actually physically commit adultery you can think it and you still committed the act he tightened that leash up even more and made it more stringent but guess what we've taken it a step further and America says I don't care we don't live on we don't have to abide by those laws that was wrote by some man you see this life is sacred and we must seek to protect all human life the Bible talks about how sacred life is but what are we doing about it where do we stand on it? How do we feel about it? Where does America stand at today? You know, where, what are we doing for it? I'm not asking you to go out there and do like some of these extremist Christian groups do and burn down the abortion clinics. No, that's not how you do it. That's not how you do it. You pray. You pray for them. You know someone that in your neighborhood, your family, or somebody distant, whatever, that wants to have an abortion? You help them find a better alternative. Give them an alternative. Here at Dixon, we support that Sin Law Pregnancy Center. I tell you, they're a great, great center to use because why? They give women a better choice than taking the life of a baby. They will help set them up with adoption agencies and they will help set them up with different places to take that child. Because why? They believe in the sanctity of life. I believe in the sanctity of life. I believe that every life deserves a chance. Even the bad ones. Now I'm going to throw something else at you. You know Hitler's mom does consult about having an abortion at one time? Would we have agreed with that abortion? Nope. Why? Yes, we know what he did is wrong. But it's still a life. It's still a life. No matter what he did, there's still a life. And it's still wrong to take that life. You see? And then there's the, the women that have to live with this for the rest of their life. One day it will come back to them. And they may say, you know what? God can't forgive me. God can't forgive you. God forgives all. The question is, are you willing to give it back to Him? Give it up to Him? So I'm telling y'all, it's time we stand up and tell America this is wrong. Amen. This is wrong. This right here, There's nothing pretty about it. There's nothing okay with this. This is a massacre of innocence. Y'all think King Herod did something when he commanded the, the death of all those babies? 63 million so far and still going. One clinic right now is killing 100 babies a week. Think about it. In the world, 
today in America today, on average, 300 babies a day die to abortion. In Louisiana, on average, 22 a day to abortion. That's out of one clinic. 22 a day goes to one clinic job. There's more than that. So, but we think about it. Why? Why is this okay? America's day is coming. We will be judged. Just like God judged Israel. Are they coming? Where do we stand on the faith of Jim Archie? Let us stand.